Hey guys, this is part three of the video series I released today from In Acoustics Reference Room. And chronologically, it's the last thing that we did in terms of doing reference room comparisons of their cables. This one is going to be comparisons of their power conditioner, the AC4500, which I have and have done videos on before, and also their power cords compared to taking those out and putting in Home Depot power strip and power cords, which I don't want to give you a spoiler alert, so if you want to jump ahead, I have the raw footage. You're just going to hear it live uh, streaming, almost quasi-streaming, as I filmed it. No breaks, nothing cut out. You can watch them change everything and my raw reactions. So you can get that if you want to just jump ahead. What I wanted to tell you in this preview is a couple of takeaways like I normally do. Number one being... It was probably the most dramatic of the comparisons we did. And it harkens back to something I wanted to reference that happened at my house many, many years ago, where I was having trouble finding a good power conditioner to work with amps. And I really never could find one that would work with amps. I had transformers, balanced power, other t d different brands that had all their special sauce. And one time I had people over and they all brought their power conditioners from isolation transformers to doohickeys, all kinds of things that supposedly didn't impact the power. Well, let me tell you, that day was very ear opening for me because my system never sounded worse plugging my amps into all these different devices. In some cases, it even added distortion, even at modest volume, it was choking the amp so much. So it always reminded me that the best thing to do is plug straight into the wall with your power conditioner. Now, once I found the Inacoustic 4500, I didn't find that negative impact. Uh, but then now that I have dedicated lines for each piece of equipment, that's taking things to a next level. Uh, and what I really want to share with you as a takeaway is that power delivery now has elevated itself. I used to be a big denier of anything in the cable realm other than just getting basic quality. But now... I'm much more in tune with parameters such as quality control, certifications, you know, knowing the people behind it, the quality of parts, all things that make high end. And then performance wise, the way I've kind of elevated power cords and power, especially power conditioners, is that so many do more harm than good. And so many are isolating you from other things in your house. But if you really take measurements, those aren't the problem. What's the problem is everything after these isolation transformers, dedicated lines, power conditioners. It's the stuff plugged into it impacting other things on the line. And that's why it's so great that the uh, Inacoustic has different modules, almost like dedicated modules for each outlet. But nothing is better than doing dedicated lines plus the Inacoustic like I've got now. That's been my favorite so far. But what you're going to hear today, well, I don't know how much you can hear on a YouTube. I'm going to kind of s summarize it. I give you my raw impressions. You're going to hear that. But one thing I was able to do is request a song that I know really well. And we played it with their power cord and power conditioners in and then without. And you'll hear what I talk about. Uh, but still to this day, I remember vividly the main difference. And it's common to what I heard that day when everything people brought out their power cords and I've done my own test. When you plug all your gear, especially amps, into something that does not uh, suit <laughs> the power demands of your amps, and sometimes it's fancy, expensive power conditioners that do this, you will hear a negative result. And this is not just related to audiophile. If you look up, I mean, you could probably Google search, what do you do not plug into a power strip? You're going to find microwaves, toaster ovens, refrigerators, things that draw high power are recommended not to be plugged into power strips. And what a lot of these fancy power conditions are, are just glamorized power strips or worse, they're putting more stuff in the and more resistance to your amps. And so you do have potential performance detriments. And so what I heard here, it wasn't like it was unlistenable, as you'll hear by but, and most of the tonal characteristics were good, but there was a level of opaqueness to her voice that hopefully will come out if you listen to real good headphones. But uh, imaging-wise is where I really noticed the biggest difference. When I hear Judith Owen in my system, and I heard initially 
with their system with the inacoustic cables in her voice was three-dimensional you could get a sense of her jaw or face everything uh, you get a sense of her uh, as soon as they plugged it into the Home Depot stuff from the first note I didn't want to say anything on camera but immediately it smashed to almost an opaque level coloration and then flat not going to be ruining the performance, not so much a uh, huge drastic difference that you can't live without. The, the bar of the gear that they had was so good, it still was enjoyable. But in the world of audiophile realm, it's still not something I would elevate above, obviously, better gear, better speakers, room treatments, DSP, you know, the Bach. Those are all things you want to have addressed first before you get into this cable realm. But... What's surprising to me and how I've learned in my journey is that I am now elevating power delivery and especially power conditioning, power dedicated lines as higher up on the total pole than other cabling. Now, if you run really long interconnects or really long speaker cables, that's where those could elevate back into my recommendation of addressing those first. Like I mentioned in the intro video, 60 feet of speaker cable, you need to have that capacitance brought down. In acoustic addresses that with their design and their air dielectric. Same thing with interconnects. You're running a passive preamp into a low input impedance amp 30 feet across the room. You need to address that interconnect first. Make sure it's a super low capacitance design like the in acoustic. So it's all about number one, just like with the Dugs, uh, you have to understand the measurements, you have to understand the needs, and then accordingly. You can't just always say, Power cords are the most important, speaker cables, interconnects. It's all going to be system dependent. So these are some of the takeaways I wanted to give you before you hear the raw footage. But hopefully you enjoy and see you back here soon. Land that would haunt me still, I took the road from Candle Craze to the Irish Sea. Down to my mother's grave I took the road Through childhood times And put my arms around The girl who was always mine And the bridges we burned They make life so beautiful the places we get from when we're so far away, all those bridges we burn and make life so beautiful. The childhood, sunny days, rainy days. So I took the road. From Candle Cray to the Western Isles, down into Conway Bay, I took the road to head on hills, and at last I cried, ancient land you.
No, that was great. I just, <laughs> I didn't even want the song to end because it sounded so good. And that's a good song to test with. It's one, it's actually the first song in my reference playlist because it tests female vocals and orchestra, two separate halves. You can concentrate on different things easily. But the real test is when she's ta- singing up front, she has a lot of S's. So it tests that sibilance and whether the S's sound like Z's, um, with these silver cables, the primary gear, audio vector, there was literally zero sibilance. And I can't say that for most systems I play that song on. There's almost always some sibilance with her S's. Uh, orchestra sounded phenomenally uh, balanced, neutral. There was no stridency that you would think people attribute to um, silver. So I wanted to hear mass strings with silver cables. And those passed with flying colors, no stridency, no harshness. Like I said, I wanted to keep listening um, at a pretty modest volume. So, uh, yeah, that that's pretty hard to beat. Um, this, the speaker's performing extremely well with the gear. Um, but, yeah, I'm ready for more. Ready for less because we take out the power. Oh, now we're taking out the power. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go from... So the power the conditioner's in now and take it to just Home Depot type yeah. strip. We, we have now, uh, the wiring includes the, the power station and includes also the AC2404 uh, power cable. Now remove, we uh, remove both, so we take away, uh, so we go back, fall back to the standard wire. Okay. The, 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 the end, very, very entry level. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. Okay. It's not from in acoustic. <laughs> Let's see what's, what's the difference now. Home Depot. Keep the same cables, okay. So just to be clear, we're using the same silver speaker cables, but we changed out power cables and took the inacoustic power conditioners out. Yeah. I took the road. From Canada Gray to the Western Isles, down into Conway Bay, I took the road to Heathered Hills and put my arms around the land that would haunt me. I took the road from Canada Cray to the Irish Sea down to my mother's grave. I took the road through childhood times and put my arms around. Girl who was always mine, and the bridges we burned, they made life so beautiful. The places we got for when we're so far away, all those bridges we burned, and made life so beautiful. Rainbows. 
So I took the road from Candacray to the Western Heights down into Conway Bay. I took the road to head on you and at last. Ancient land you owe me still. Yeah, okay, so that was pretty evident right, right from the start of when she started singing because I'm very familiar with this song. It's literally the number one song in my playlist. I've heard it a million times, and I'm very familiar with her voice, and so the immediate difference was just with a level of opaqueness and a level of um, muted uh, tone, um, hollowness to her voice that I'm not used to, certainly didn't hear it the, you know, in the previous iteration but again, um, not getting into audiophile jargon part, <laughs> there's certain parts of that song that even though I've heard it a million times, gives me goosebumps at certain parts when I'm hearing it good. And certainly I got that in the previous um, iteration. But the, the opaqueness of her voice, certainly, I still got a little bit of the goosebumps, uh, but it, it was not to the level of I normally get and certainly not the earlier iteration because... It was just a, an opaqueness to her voice that I didn't like uh, comparing to what I had heard just previously. Um, and I don't know, maybe my foot is being seen in the video here or not. I'll have to look at the video. But I did notice that at one point I wasn't moving my toes or tapping some subliminal cues that tell me whether I'm enjoying it as much or not. And, um, yeah. That that was probably the most dramatic A B that we've done so far, um, and it's pretty amazing that just the power conditioner and power chords, which intuition wise I would think have not that big a difference. I would not expect, um, but that was pretty ear opening um, and a testament to the acoustic, which I guess I, I have it, so I enjoy it and. Uh, Today was just further confirmation. Very impressive. 